Well, if you're like me, you're probably sick of these flip floppy quill handles. Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, I finally decided to uh, make my own sensitive uh, jig bore style uh, quill feed handle. So uh, this video is about making the adapter, uh, measuring and making the adapter to fit the steering wheel and go to the uh, and go to the quill on the milling machine. So let's check it out and see how I did that. All right, so here's what we're doing. So what we're, the plan here is to replace this handle, which is a little quick release deal that releases this pin, which engages with this, which connects to the leg bone and makes the quill go up and down. So what we're doing is uh, we're going to make an adapter that adapts this cool wheel onto the mill here and creates, you know, what's called in the industry is kind of a jig bore handle. So jig bores. Jig borers machines typically came with a round handle like this. Now there's some advantages with a with a round handle is you don't have to reposition, reposition the lever all the time. You know when you're drilling, um, and uh, it, it's a little better for sensitive feeding and stuff like that. So uh, it's just kind of a nice uh, uh, a nice difference. So I found this one on uh, on eBay, and I, you know it's like thirty bucks or something like that. And it was the right diameter, which is uh, it's 14 inch diameter, which is not too big and not too small um, to get in the way of things. So uh, let's get started with uh, with our adapter design. So we got to do a we got to do a few things first before we uh, get going here. We got a bunch of measuring to do. All right, so here's our measuring problem here. Um, we're going to measure this this spline or more correctly uh, serration uh, that's on the ID of the of this, of this steering wheel. Um, so there's a couple things we need here to recreate it. We need a, a, um, a minor diameter, a major diameter, uh, the tooth count, and the angle of the tooth. Okay, now I've kind of looked at it under magnification so I get some some ideas on you know what it really is. And, uh, but it's actually kind of an interesting measuring exercise that we should uh, probably go through. So I'm going to use a, a material that uh, some of you guys may know about. It's a low temperature melting alloy and we're going to make a positive male casting um, from that serration and see if we can pull some measurements off of that. So let's go, uh, let's go look at that setup and, uh, and make a little casting. Here's the setup for our uh, our low temperature alloy here. Some people call this uh, woods metal. There's several names for it, and there's several um, recipes that have different melting temperatures. This particular one melts at 168 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is you know probably about uh, what I don't know about 72 Celsius, something like that. Um, and you can see in here we're, we're liquid and we're pretty much ready to pour. You don't want to pour it at the, uh, at the exact melting temperature because it's a little, uh, you need a little excess heat into it uh, because as soon as you pour it into something cooler, um, it starts to freeze up. Um, so I've skimmed off the dross here and, uh, and we're, we're pretty clean and we're ready to go. So let's uh, get set to pour this thing. Get rid of this. Uh thermocouple and you can see it just you can just pop it off um, uh, pretty easily there okay so what I made a little plastic plug that kind of comes up from the bottom to, to block off most of the opening so we're just gonna pour some of this in there until it covers the covers the spline up up to this area here so let's uh, go ahead and do that and see if I can uh, do it with that bozo in this thing here. All right, there we go. All right. I don't think it's going to be stuck in there very hard, but and it wasn't. Ooh. All right, that's not bad. See, this is, it's sturdy enough that we can get some measurements off of it. 
Now this spline is damaged a little bit in one area, um, thanks to some bozo. Um, but uh, we should be able to get some uh, some good information off of that. But there you go. Let's get, get kind of a solid uh, piece to work with now. Let's take a look at this thing here. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bumpy. I don't want to measure it on the damaged part, so. That section looks pretty good. And then, okay, so let's measure across across there. Let's try that and see what we get. Measure in a couple places here. It's not a perfect. Uh, it's not a perfect casting, but it's better than eyeballing, right? So it looks like we're around 700 diameter is what I'm gonna kind of guess is our major. So let's see, minor. We don't know what the minor is yet. So our major. Major diameter, I'm going to say is 0.700, okay. So now let's look at the uh, um, the tooth angle. That's a little harder to measure because it's such a small, it's such a small thing. But what, what we do know is um, from looking at the spline up close is it comes to a point, okay. So uh, once we know, so we know the, uh, the minor diameter, which I didn't write down here, um, uh, that was just, Probed with a pin through the uh, through the ID, uh, and I, it was six it was six ninety something. Uh, we measure the angle, and then we can kind of recreate this in a in a, um, AutoCAD or a, a CAD system, and uh, and then determine uh, some of the other stuff, and then we'll count the teeth too. But you don't want to watch me do that. All right, so here's our casting. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the tooth angle. Uh, under magnification on uh, my little toolmaker's microscope. I've shown this before, but uh, um, it's just one of my most prized possessions because it was made by one of my mentors, and I don't know if you can quite read his name here, but he engraved it in there, and that was Charlie Blessing, and this was made in 1958, he built this thing, and uh, he built the whole thing, so he built all the slides and everything, and he even made the... Uh, um, he mounted the lenses in this uh, this housing, the whole nine yards. And uh, um, anyway, so like I said, it's one of my most prized possessions. But it's a good tool for measuring this angle here because we can look at it closely, and you know we can translate the stage around, and we can also rotate the stage. So there's a couple ways we can we can do that. It's got a 90 degree crosshair in it um, that you'll see in a bit, and then we can also measure angles with uh, this little itty bitty cute as hell rotary table. So let's uh, see what we can see. All right, so there's our tooth in the toolmaker's microscope. And there's one ledge of the tooth. So we'll, we've lined up on that, as you can see with the crosshairs there. And then we'll come up and we'll examine the uh, other tooth. So I'm gonna call that groove angle 90 degrees uh, by this. Uh, so, and what we can do is, we can rotate, oops, is that the one? Some of these are better than others. And we can rotate over. There we go, so there's another one. This is actually a hard shot to get here uh, through the uh, eyepiece of the microscope here. All right, and then there's the, uh, the other wall. So I'm gonna call that 90 degrees is our tooth angle and then we'll do the layout and uh, get ready to well we're get all our numbers so that we can cut our serration properly all right so we're pretty close to uh, making something now we got a little chicken sketch going here so from our measuring uh, exercise there um, we've got 40 teeth minor diameter 653 the tooth angle 
is 90 degrees and the major diameter is 700. So this is what the actual adapter looks like and then this is the um, was the hardest part to measure was this the spline the internal spline on the on the steering wheel so I did do a, a CAD layout here and hopefully this doesn't blow out the camera exposure here oh, okay it's not too bad um, just a you know it's a little easier to do uh, um, graphically okay so there's our 90 degree tooth form there and it's arrayed so it's arrayed around the circle and it's 40 teeth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an end mill and cut this with a with just a 90 degree end mill, okay? But we can't do that up here. Uh, we need to do it at the 45 degree mark here, right? Where that tooth is actually perpendicular to the machine, right? So it's a vertical edge and, a, and then a horizontal edge. So I pulled off the dimensions there. Those are a couple of needed numbers. So we'll touch off on the top of the shaft and we'll move down 123. And then depending on what size cutter we use, it's, it'll be something pretty small. We'll move over so that the, the periphery of the, of the end mill is uh, at uh, 227. And then uh, we'll, uh, we get to do some indexing, okay? We're gonna use a dividing head to divide this out, although it's a pretty simple one. Nothing fancy with, uh, with 40 teeth there. Um, let's see, what else? I don't know. What do you say we go make some stuff here? Uh, let's make our blank and get our blank going, which is that. And then uh, we'll cut, our, uh, we'll cut our, our custom 40 tooth serration. All right, there's our blank. Um, I was trying to decide what to make it out of and looking at the different round bars I had around and I decided to use this since I'm not really going to use it for anything else and it's got a little extra strength so uh, this should turn real nice and uh, leave a real nice finish so we'll see how it goes.
Okay, you ready? Ah, come on. Oh, it's got it's got a vent hole in it. It's not gonna it's not gonna do the thing. Oh well. Is, uh, we're going to drill a couple of holes and ream them for press fit for a couple of dowel pins. Now, some of you guys, you know, press fits are one of those things that uh, takes some experience to kind of to kind of get a handle on. Um, now, this is a uh, what I would call a normal alloy steel dowel pin, and uh, they're centerless ground and they're hard. Um, Typically, uh, in America at least, uh, these are ground two ten thousandths of an inch oversize of the nominal, okay? And so be sure to check them when you're uh, working with press fits, right? And these are a little bit over nominal. So there's 316s, 1875, right? And um, now, here's the tricky part, right? It's a couple of small holes. I got a couple of reamers here. and so normally you would just ream the nominal size hole, which is 3 16 okay? Um, now, reamers are another one of those things that people struggle with because they don't always behave the same. So when you get one that's, that's cutting good and it's cutting consistently, great, it's all lovely, but uh, they don't always perform as to the size that they're published. So if you, if you got something that you don't want to mess up or bozo, you got to be a little bit careful and uh, you know ideally you would do a test hole in the same material and then gauge that hole and see if it's see if it's right what I'm going to do in this case is I have a reamer here that's undersized 187 now that's a pretty stiff press fit uh, on a small pin like that um, so we'll see what uh, what that reams first and then uh, we can come back with the uh, um, 1875 reamer now um, what do I want to say? So reamers behave differently depending on how much material that you're taking out. So uh, the starting hole size uh, plays a part in uh, you know how much uh, how the reamer behaves. So uh, typically light cuts produce more accurate sizes. So, uh, um, but not always. Anyway, so reamers are one of those things that you got to be a little bit careful with, and uh, they don't always. Uh, perform as uh, advertised so and 
you know, some of the guys out <laughs> watching this video right now are going, oh yeah, I've had that happen. <laughs> All right, 705. All right, let's... Button, well, well, we got the tool in. It's not very far to move, so we'll go ahead and uh, let's move over there. Drill. So I'm going to set my depth here. Let's see how deep do I want to go. Let's go 300. I drill the hole deeper than it needs to be so that there's room for the the chips to have a place to go so all right and another thing to remember about about reamers um, is they're just gonna follow the hole that's there they don't uh, they don't establish uh, true position or, uh, or accurate position. So, if you want accurate position, uh, you need to you need to bore. It didn't take much out there. That was the idea. Now these are small pins and uh, there's not a lot of engagement so they would probably press in here fine. It might, it's close to the edge so we don't want to get any edge distortion from displaced material either. So, uh, alright, well let's feel like a snug press. So, let's get a, I'm going to get a 187 pin and see if it fits. Alright, so we get a 187 minus pin which means that's the nominal size minus two tenths, so that helps you get it in the hole. And looks like we're looks like that particular reamer did a pretty good job. Yeah, and it's that's a good hole. All right, so I lucked out this particular reamer here, um, and this is a spiral flute reamer. I don't know if you guys notice that. So. There's spiral flute and then there's straight flute. Straight flute are cheaper and uh, more readily available, and they work and they work fine. Um, if you have um, any cross holes or any uh, grooves or anything that you have to span, spirals better. In general, spirals better. Uh, produces a smoother finish, but uh, like I said, not it's more expensive and they're not always readily available in every every size. These you can get in advertise ten thousandths increments uh, if you want so uh, all right so I'm gonna call that good and then now we're going to see how this reamer, oops this reamer performs all right, come on get up in there Let's see how this reamer does on this hole here get a little liquid love and It's really only taking out a few tents there, so. And I barely see any, any chips on there at all, so. I'm gonna go for it, actually. So now it's got a, a perceptible wiggle to it now. See, this way. 
There, okay, here we go. So, all that talking, <laughs> all that talking, and it's not a press fit. How do you like that? So this particular reamer is not doing its job, and it's cutting oversize, all right? So, um, all right, well, I'm gonna push that one in, and then I'm just gonna go with a kind of a heavy press on this one, so I'll have you know, the original uh, handle only has one pin in it anyway. I doubled up and put two, so I'm going to uh, just press that one in and uh, and have this one a uh, floater. It's trapped in the assembly, so I'm not super worried about it, but I'm just annoyed that after all that talking, uh, <laughs> I, uh, it reamed oversized. So join the club. <laughs> right, let's see how we how we did there. So this is this is what we're adapting to here, and you can see the drive pins in that, and then that set screw that I put in the uh, in the side there is just a retaining uh, or one of these. It was half inch. Yeah, so it holds it. The set screw kind of goes in that groove there. It just keeps it from falling off, right? All right, looks like we're fine. All right, we're almost there. Cool. So I think we're ready. Uh, we're ready for serrations now. So let's get the uh, the uh, index heads um, set up, and uh, we'll do some uh, we'll do some serrating. What we get here is a dividing head, a traditional dividing head. This one is uh, made by a company, uh, a U.S. company called Ellis. And then uh, my friend Charlie gave this to me a long time ago. Uh, it's, it's kind of a neat indexer. It's worth a little bit of talking about. Um, you can see it's got a chuck mounted here. You can use it a couple of different ways. So the most traditional is with uh, the plates and it has a worm gear system in here with a 40 to 1 ratio and then you can, you can index around um, and then you can do partial indexes and that's what these little arms are about they help you keep track of where you are uh, and then these have different numbers of holes uh, in the different radii here so there's a little bit of math involved to uh, uh, depending on the number of indexes that you're doing okay so that's one way you can use it um, another way is to um, disengage the uh, is to disengage the worm, which we will do right now. And I can tip that out and disengage that. And now this thing is basically free to rotate, okay? Uh, and it's a little hard to see, but there's this plate here has a, a bunch of holes in it, and it just has a shot pin here. So you can, you can index directly uh, by the number of holes in this plate, or partials, or whatever, so. And that's what those numbers are about there. So there's a zero one, and yeah, there's a zero right there. Okay, so that's another way you can use it. Um, it also tilts. Uh, there's a scale up here, and you loosen the bolts here, so you can set this at an angle, or you can set it straight up if you want. So it's it's a nice little setup. And uh, I I or actually probably Charlie did the sides of these. The side of the base that way you can just throw it up on in the vise and clamp it in the vise and get going here and especially for a little a little indexing job like this it's great you can just throw it up there and go so um, we are going to use it in index mode here so now i gotta get it back engaged with the worm gear okay and then i will adjust this so that uh, I uh, don't have any any backlash, okay? But it still turns, okay? Now we're doing 40 teeth, so it's actually pretty easy. So uh, it's one turn per tooth, okay? Um, so it's no no tricky indexing in this. Sorry guys. Now Bozo came to town here, and uh, he was so excited about pushing these pins in here and trying it that Bozo forgot about the next step, which was Putting this in the uh, putting this in the indexer here, and now that it is foiled slightly by the fact that he's got some pins sticking out, and it doesn't. I can't sit it back against the uh, 
the face of the chuck here, so I'm kind of annoyed. Um, but the workaround is I'm just going to put, this fits a uh, one inch diameter shaft, so we're just going to put that in there like so. And now I can sit against the jaws here. Okay. Alright, so better take that chuck key out so somebody will, uh, somebody will yell at me, right? Somebody on the internet will yell at me. Put a set screw in there. And the cutting forces are pretty low in this case, so I'm not too worried about, uh, um, you know, the set screw not holding. Okay, so we're kind of ready. What we want to do is um, we want to make this be concentric with the rotation of the indexer. Uh, that way it's, as we rotate, it's not doing this, and we're and we're cutting in the same place each time, it would change the depth of the tooth, right? So we wanna make sure that that's rotating on center. So we'll check that now. Let's come over. I've, I've, uh, I've disengaged the worm here so that we can rotate this. Okay, so it looks like it needs a little bit of help. So it's four thousandths or so. And, uh, all right, so. So now this is a buck chuck here that's on here, so it has the ability to uh, to be adjusted here. So we're sort of in between here. That's my high, so I'm gonna slacken that a little bit. Tighten this up a little. There we go. So it's kind of like four jaw in reverse. I'm going to call that pretty good. What do we got? Like a half a thou or something like that. Eh, not even that. Not even that. Actually. Alright. Okay. Okay, so now we'll pick up the center line of this and get our cutter ready and let's uh, cut some serrations. Oh, I think we're all ready here. I'm at, de I'm at my numbers. Put a little uh, liquid love on there.
just doing a little, little deburr in here while it's still on the, uh, just to take the fuzz off of it. If, if you can get a, so once I take it out of here, it would be very, very difficult to, uh, to line it back up if I had to cut those teeth a little deeper or something. So if you can, I, I don't know, the steering wheel may or may not, uh, make it there. Let's see. Did I say it was 14 inches, right? Oh, okay. No, it should make it. Um, I'll get a try here. Oh, yeah, that feels pretty good. All right. It's actually a nice little knob. It's a long way around to make a knob, but uh, uh, that's a great little, great little grip. Let's Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna call that pretty damn good, huh? And I, off camera, I made this little spiffo piece here. Get in there. There we go. And I think, I think we're ready here, guys. Let's uh, pull this mess out of here and uh, try it out.